So here's what I observe to be going on, and here's what I think we can do to help. Mostly your slash ourselves, one can aspire to help others as well. But that, I almost said the word shouldn't, and that's a weird one. But, but that idea of I'm doing this selflessly for others, that exists on a very shaky foundation. The, the only thing that you are certain of, and this has, this has nothing to do with like the scientific method, like we proved a thing, like in this very moment, the only thing I can assume that you are experiencing is that you're having thoughts in this, in this thing behind your eyes, and you're seeing stuff with your eyes, and you're hearing things with your ears, and you're taking all the, th all the stuff that's coming at you now, which most of the time is, is so much stimuli that we focus on one thing, or usually, you know, seeing, hearing. If you're getting really into taking in this media thing, then at some point you disregard the stimuli of the room, the cloth that you're, you know, touching, that your, your clothes... You're not constantly aware of, like, oh, well, the jeans are a little bit more abrasive than this cottony shirt. I'm wearing a hat in a bed now. Um, it's just, we're just, you know, you're doing a thing and you're taking in whatever it is that you're paying attention to. Anyway, all of that summed up, you're having, ex you are having an experience. A, a human knee experience. You know, there's animals that have senses far beyond ours, and and there's much to suggest that there may be spectrums of stimuli stuff that we don't even deal with in a sensory way, or we're not even aware. I'm sure there's stuff going on out there in the multiverse. Uh, yeah, that, that idea of multiverse, like dimensions. We don't do dimensions. Most of us don't even think about dimensions. Um... So, but, but, but anyway, you got, you got your sensory input going on, which I wouldn't just limit it to five. There also seems to be like this kind of like telepathic, like radio waves of, of the heart and brain thing. And I'm just saying, this is just an observation. Like people, magical turtles don't just walk into a room and touch it and taste it and, and, and smell it and, and, and see it and. Did I get them all? And, and see the dead people in the room. Yeah, well, you know what I'm saying. Like, you're not, you're not, that's not all that we're detecting and doing. And it's weird that we separate sense from thought sometimes because that's like, ugh, it's weird. But anyway, you're having an experience and you have models and words to navigate your experience as I do. And I guess another selfish aspect of it is don't you want a world with happier turtles? If there were happier turtles running around, there would be less insanity and the bad kind of chaos. And there would be more of, like, the good kind of chaos. Like, woo, it's getting crazy sort of thing. Not like, oh my god, why sort of shit, which is, like, ubiquitous, bro. It's, like, it's all over the place. It's in different scales. Not everybody is, like, just burning shit down and killing each other, but... People are, are out there wrecking the day based on motives that they think are worth wrecking a day and more than a day. Like people are people are dying over stuff that if you just take it and look at it as like, well, here, here's a possible result. Here's another thing. These folks think this, this, this or this is here and needs to be or all of the things that we end up dying over are like. They're really arbitrary in the long run. They're just, they're not things that if you, if you saw, like, continue to, to stay alive or possibly have this, what I think is ideal outcome. Like, the things that people are, are risking their days for, or just risking, you know, let's, let's not go to the extreme of dying. How about just, you know, what are you willing to, to get upset about? What are you willing to feel bad about? Because all that you know is happening is what you're sensing and thinking, experiencing right now. So, what on earth could be worth making that shitty when it can be so good? You know this. You've had it good. You've had good days. I have good days often. I'm trying like hell to have a good day today. And that is, that is what I mean to get at. 
It seems to me that the difficult part isn't doing the things. It isn't winning. Like, think of what would be winning to you. I can think of, I know exactly what I'm trying to do here. I can't quite tell you about it, because it involves tricking you into thinking a thing, and then telling you that I made it up, and then tricking you again, and over and over and over, and that's kind of, so I, I'm being too general to be giving it away, but spoiler alert, I have a plan. Because if you don't have a plan, you'll become a part of someone else's plan. And, but everyone's plan is to, enjoy, is to enjoy themselves to some degree, or to validate themselves, or to do the thing that they think is important in reality, thus, like, the political people. Um, I hate to use the word political for so many things. The, the folks who go out there and try to impact society, or, you know, just, just impact the world outside of their own mind and their own group of, of you know, inner, inner Illuminati turtles, you know, that... That's crazy to some folks. They think like, well, how do you're try you're messing with things that don't concern you? Well, if you go out and put yourself in them, they do concern you quite a bit. You're, the, the, you can convince yourself that anything is the thing that is the most important thing happening here. For a lot of folks out there, it's like a sport that they're trying to master, or that they're observing, or coaching, or that they're just a, just a fan of, you know, or you know, like there's so many people who have their 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 well being in life. Like, they make a living based on a thing that ends up being their thing that they are involved with, and everything else is the stuff that, you know, doesn't concern them. But these, I mean, these are decisions. But, you know, there is a symptom of society right now where there's a lot of folks who feel like it wasn't their decision what sort of life they ended up with or what they do with tomorrow and, and, and thereafter. And that's kind of sad. Uh... Sad is what I'm getting at. We are battling the sads. We're battling the the sads and the the frustrating kind of angers that the the, the debilitating. We are we are at a, at a constant war that that happens within our our brains and dare I say hearts and some would suggest spirit or soul sort of thing, but we are in a, in a constant war of just. Not so much of doing the thing that's easy, but you got to get your mind to a place where you can do the thing. We're trying to optimize the ridiculousness of the human experience. Because, I mean, just think how preposterous it is, some of us. Like, it's preposterous that I get sad sometimes. I get debilitatingly depressed. It doesn't make any sense. And now am I saying that right now? Because here's the thing. They, 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 with the helping folks, from what I observe, of like people who, who speak to help, there's two ways in which you can help people. You can either give them a codex to... The, to, to follow, which is either the way you achieve this, you know, success or happiness. However, I, I read something that, like, a lot of the people who do, like, motivational speaking things, they, uh, they don't practice what they preach, or they're not, like, really that happy of people. And I can understand that. And I started seeing myself at some point when I realized, you know, the idea of, like, putting negative things out there as opposed to putting positive things out there, um, that sometimes you are just moping, and you are just like, hey, does anybody else want to join in on, like, the the pity party? Like, I want to have actual pity parties where we all gather together and, like, make eye contact with one another, and instead of, like, talking about all the things that happened to you that week and, like, you know, just complaining about shit, we just, like, let out this visceral chant of mopey whininess at each other and just... Mm -hmm. And then I would imagine laughter would ensue because it's ridiculous. We're just that we whine about shit. Come on now. Like, our lives are relatively great. They really are. But keeping yourself aware of that is a struggle and why. The words that I want to say right now, like, it's not necessarily the words. Like, the feeling and the confidence that I have gained in certain aspects of life, like, are all in here. But I can't just, like, gelfling touch and beam my thoughts into you. I like have to find the words and I have to find myself in the right mood to be able to say the words. Like I'm laying down now and I'm like fucking tired <laughs> at the end of the day. But this was a time where I feel like I both was motivated and slowed down enough to take my time and try to say the thing, which is that doing the things is not the difficult part. It's getting yourself where, where, here where you need to be in order to do the things and don't you realize that like think of all like the actual true efforts that we've done people usually the high five at the end of, of days of like we did some hard work today it's really it's not like 
excruciating. Most of the things that we really that we really want to do. I'm talking about actual goals now that you hold of the things because part of uh, the thing uh, that is your mission is usually you cling to something that you truly you know enjoy. And I don't know a single person who is super passionate about something that they also fucking hate. That's not the same thing. <laughs> That's not that those things cannot be. But yeah. And, like, we have somatic health. We have to, like, stay well-slept or else you just start slowing down and then having weird thoughts. And then, like, getting into this state of, like, a third of your of your potential self. It's wild out there for a turtle. It's just... It's like nutrition and it's drugs and it's a lack of drugs. It's exercise... Soon? Mapping in shades room. It's getting the opportunity without interruption to do the thing. Doing the thing is not the difficult part. Showing up with a healthy mind and excited about it and being given the opportunity. That's the thing. And and many of us and one of the things of, of being in a in a mental rut or or funk, if you will is that you don't realize that the opportunity is there. Like, you're alive right now. You you may very well have the limbs you need to do the thing, like, physically do the thing that you're trying to do. You do have a brain. Like, some of you have the ability to speak. Some of you have the ability to understand. Some of you have magical kitties. That help you along the way so much, much. Look at he's so magical and he's my friend. I loves my porter house. And this this cat is a drug. And and are, are have become domesticated drugs to us. Like have you seen all the research of how much it helps a person, like physically, objectively, to have a magical turtle like this in their life? Like my porter house, she's so magical. You're the best. I love you. You release dopamine in my brain. You make me feel like there's hope for existence. You make me feel like there's something worth fighting for. You're the best. <laughs> you know? And and planting little tricks for ourselves so that we're in the right headspace to be able to do the things that actually, like I keep saying, aren't that difficult. Just... In execution, I was not going to execute you. You're the best. Um, oh, she's purring now. And it makes me happier. You would plant little tricks on ourselves to put us in the right head space to be able to do the things. Some would even say heart space, but I don't say hippie shit like that. Because it would raise eyebrows about me. And I will not be accused of being spooky and magical. Only my kitty is the most magical of all the turtles. You're the best in the world. So yeah, this kitty and, like, some drug things. Like, okay, yeah, back to the thing. So you either give people a codex to be able to do the thing that worked for you, or I found that you can really help people by by telling them that they're not alone in so many words. Which is... Which is to, uh... To give little personal diatribes and such that 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 show people that like hey like look I, I, I'm the one who's supposed to be like coaching you to do better because of you know and and I get fucking de- depressed and have to smoke cannabis I don't have to smoke cannabis but for me cannabis is the instant relief from any kind of, of chemical depression or just I cannot despair when I'm in that, that thought mode. It's just immediately gone. It can be replaced with worry or apprehension or tiredness, but I'm never, 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 never sad when, when I'm on cannabis, as it were. And isn't that great that we have those little cheat codes around? Cats to pet? cannabis to vaporize or to you know just get it get it in you somehow uh (laughs) coffee i know so many folks who do not identify as drug addicts who say 
that I need coffee to function. He wants to be be sociable again. I should just always video log with my kiddies. Then maybe people will watch these. <laughs> oh, you're the most, most best. You're just an anomaly of science. No. So yeah, my kitty cat is a drug. You know, monthly psilocybin experiences help. Um, not necessarily monthly. Let's not put a regiment on that. Um, a lot of people get a lot of help from the cannabis, and the caffeines. Um, but this isn't about drugs. Yes, this is about drugs because your brain is a drug. You are you you exist within a drug station. You are a chemical meat bag. You are a push button process of thoughts that go through filters we call do we call them emotions? Your emotional state. You can put some somebody can be in an emotional state where even the most adorable kitty will not, will have no effect on, on bringing them, you know, happiness. And this is true. Like, you can be so upset that this face won't do it for you. Can you imagine that? It's crazy to think about. It's a drug. It's the depression drug. You know, and that, and so, yeah, I feel like I've, I've, had enough circular speaking right now of the thing that I'm trying to get across, which is what we endeavor to do is to feel good enough to do the things that are actually relatively easy in there. You know, easy. They take hard work, but it's fun work. It's good. You just have to show up sane. Do I have advice for how to show up sane? I just listed a few things. Get a fucking cat, first of all. Um... But if you can't take care of a cat, then push-ups, jog, um, exercise is a fucking awesome drug. Take up a sport, take up something that involves moving. I don't know, if, you, if, if sex is available to you, do that constantly, all of the time. Obviously this requires a mutual agreement and mutual enthusiasm for it to be good. Oh, you're the most magical. But, you know, like, take advantage of uh, of your privileged existence if if sex that you're enthused about is, is, uh, is you know, if there's a person, uh, let's just put it this way, I don't mean to be a romantic, but there's someone around that, that, that you love and are super lusty with, and you can do that and do it. I mean, just access to folks who platonically love you, have a good, thorough 38 second hug a day. You know, do what you gotta do to keep your chemical meat sack thing convinced that this is worth doing, because then you'll show up and do the things, and then you'll actually be objectively winning in reality, won't you, Magical Chardol? And then it's end game. You've had a good life. You're having a, you'll be having a good life. But don't get it in your head that it's like just the circumstance. That's all I try to dissuade people from, from thinking. That the, the world is not being cruel to you. The world is not, is not cruel. The world is the same way it is when you feel good as to when you feel horrendous. You're just doing things and thinking different thoughts. And you are a push-button chemical molecule mixture thing. There is a randomness to this. But you can find ways to direct it to, to a degree. Health is probably the most important thing. I really, really wish I could say something cooler. I, I, don't, I don't strive to be cool anymore. There was a time where I attempted that. It, it went terribly awry. But like, at the end of the day, my objective opinion of you is to yeah, be, be get really serious. Not necessarily serious. Not necessarily serious. Uh, become... Regard your health as the condition of your state of mind and do what you can to have it be in a place where you can feel awesome slash do awesome and you're probably going to win the game of life. In my observation. There's factors, obviously. There's no, you're the best. You're the only one making this interesting. I'm just saying the same shit over and over. Looks into his eyes. He's the best. He's the most, most good. Hooray in the world. This is our movie. This is the cover of our movie together. Well, fucked it up.